Hello everyone, thank you for visiting my YouTube channel again. Welcome back to Forty Splash channel. The contents of this video channel is only meant to explain the topics in my modules on different subjects. Samples, definitions, and special photos are not to approach copyright of the owner. With you about the pertinent provisions of the laws of the Philippines that promotes and uh, encourage the people to engage into artistic creations or what we call artifacts that evolves as a part of our national cultural heritage well we already discussed last time that when we talk about cultures we should include our beliefs our languages our traditions our customs that uh, the filipino people are using or employing in their particular communities this is actually a manifestation of the support of the government to the artistic talents and skills of every Filipino uh, citizen. Okay? That they do not uh, ignore these people who have these talents but actually encourage them and support them to pursue with their uh, skills in order to give pride to the national identity of the Philippines as a nation. And one of these laws or provisions of law is the Section 8 of Republic Act 7356, which creates the National Commission for Culture and Arts. This is abbreviated as NCCA. Well, I need not to discuss this supposedly because you have already that on your public reading material. But anyway, this particular agency was tasked to formulate policies for the development of culture and arts in the Philippines. Okay. They Im should implement policies in coordination with affiliated cultural agencies, meaning to say, yung mga local uh, agencies that protects our culture, that protects the practices, languages, and beliefs of a particular uh, community. Okay, so the Philippine government clearly supports the creation of artifacts that reflects our national identity and encourage every Filipino person to preserve our own cultural heritage through these creations. Okay? The mere enactment of the law that I have mentioned a while ago, RA 7356, is already a manifestation of its support, in which case the government provides fund for the development of culture and arts that is already substantiating or a substantial manifestation, a very essential way of portraying support to the Filipino uh, artist. Okay? Art as a recognized part of our culture is also defined in Republic Act 10066, which is enacted in order to protect and conserve the national cultural heritage. So instead na gusto ng ng bansang Pilipinas na mawala na yung mga practices or customs and traditions that every Filipino people or Filipino community is practicing, okay? ang ginawa ng Pinas is to enact laws that would encourage these Filipino artists to create more, to innovate more, enhance more their talents and uh, skills in its creation. Okay. So, it provided fans for agencies that would support the talents of these Filipino artists. So, may ma kaya nga tayo may mga community or league of artists or groups of artists in the Philippines that was supported or is supported by the government itself. Okay. Uh, there are two types of cultural heritage that we know. We have what we call the intangible cultural heritage and tangible cultural heritage. Well, it is very obvious that if you talk about 
uh, objective or what you call this tangible cultural uh, heritages you mean the objects artifacts that are being produced being made by artists and of course if you talk about intangible cultural heritage this refers to the practices representations or expressions of knowledge and skills of every Filipino artist as well as the instruments that they use to produce or the objects and artifacts that are associated with these particular beliefs or practices. Okay? The co communities, groups, and individuals recognize as part of their culture. Like for example, is in Kalinga, the skin art of tattooing done by Apong Wang O that you know and is very really very famous is one of the cultural heritage of Kalingas okay, of Cordillera that is being uh, protected or is being uh, promoted by the Philippine government because this actually becomes part of the national identity of the Filipino people and this particular skill is what we call okay, the knowledge itself the skill itself of Apong Wangod in doing the skin art tattoo is what we call the intangible cultural heritage it's the practice that you talk about when you are uh, pertaining to intangible cultural heritage while in fact the the tattoo itself okay the product of Apong Wang Ud is already the tangible cultural heritage. Okay, yun ang diferensya. So, pag sinabi natin tangible cultural heritage, this refers to objects, this refers to, um, uh, what do you call this? Tangible objects and things that are being created by a, a certain artist. Like, for example, a painting. The painting itself is a tangible cultural heritage. The, the tattoo itself is a cultural tangible heritage. Okay, the uh, what they call the G string, okay, produced or locally produced by the Cordillera people, is a tangible cultural heritage because these objects are being made to represent a particular culture of. Filipino people of a group of Filipino people okay so katulad nga na sinabi natin yung g-string or in Tagalog yung bahag na gamit ng mga taga Cordillera that represents the culture of our the, of the Cordilleran people okay and that particular thing as a representation of our culture is our cultural heritage okay and you refer that as tangible cultural heritage when you talk about the intangible okay, intangible means something that you cannot touch something that you cannot uh, you may not be able to see you may not be able to feel okay these are representations these are expressions of one's culture kaya nga yung example ko kanina yung pagsasagawa the process of Apong Wang Ud in making the skin art of tattoo is what we call the intangible cultural heritage. The practice of making or putting up a tattoo is what we call the intangible cultural heritage. While the product, the art of tattoo or the tattoo itself is already the tangible cultural heritage. Okay, now, since uh, we are talking about intangible cultural heritage. We have to include there oral traditions. So what are oral traditions that are practiced locally in, in our place? Here na lang, din na huwag na tayong lumayo pa. In Kalinga, okay, ano yung mga oral traditions ninyo? Like for example, yung kapag uh, may taong may sakit, may practices kayo doon and then somebody is going to sing. Anong tawag natin doon? Uh, sa Kalinga, meron kayong term doon. I'm sorry guys, I am not a pure Kalinga so I, I, I do not know the right term. Okay? Pero alam ko na may practice tayong mga taga-Kalinga that 
uh, pag somebody is go is uh, has died or somebody is um, sick um, seriously sick may mga rituals na ginagawa yung mga elders wherein one of them might sing a song or relay uh, tell stories through song okay? or chanting that is one of the oral traditions that could uh, identify or that could uh, be uh, defined as what you call intangible cultural heritage one also is performing arts an example of this is yung ginagawa natin during the Kalinga Foundation Day wherein we use the gongs and uh, the females are going to dance so there is actually a uh, performance, okay? street performance usually that were being uh, portrayed or shown in public and that is one of our culture and that is what we call a, an intangible cultural heritage. Uh, this is being done usually in ano yung tawag natin yun? Awong Chigangsa. Okay? That is practiced during the Kalinga Foundation Day. Sa Tabuk Day, I do not know if um, anong tawag din doon. But in, in, during Foundation Day of Kalinga, we usually celebrate the Awong Chigan Shop. Okay? So, yun yung ginagawa natin. So, this, that, that is particular and intangible cultural heritage of the Kalinga people. Okay? Social practices. Knowledge and practices concerning nature and the universe. Okay, yung sa mga Ilocano naman, pag, pag magtatakip silim, alam niya, magta, magtatakip silim or dapit hapon, yung, for example, it's about around 5 or 6 p.m. during sunset, yun ang takip silim, eh, sa Tagalog takip silim. So, in English, sunset. During sunset, uh, you do not, if you are an Ilocano, may mga paniniwala sila or believe sila na huwag kang basta-basta magtatapon ng kung ano-ano, mas lalo na pag mainit na tubig, kapag magtatakip silim. Okay? Why? You might be uh, pouring the hot water okay, on somebody else that you cannot see. Some elements that you cannot see. Well, it is referred as a supernatural belief sometimes, but uh, this is actually a belief by or practiced by Filipinos who are Ilocanos and usually they practice that and even the fact that they are not going also to burn trashes or garbages during night time okay? well that could not also be a, a belief on supernatural belief but it is rightful for us not to burn our garbages at night because the tendency is um, you might or it might cost a, a large scale or a wider fire that we need to put out using or calling the rescuers or the firefighters okay so baka magkasunog pa but actually the belief of the Ilocanos is that baka may elemento ka na hindi mo makikita na nasasagasaan mo o kaya nasusunog mo because of your act and you will be punished for that. That is the belief. And that practice or belief is actually part of our culture as Filipinos and these are referred as intangible cultural heritage. So there are other varied kinds of arts in different parts of the world. Marami yan. Okay, so we cannot uh, go uh, for them one by one but what is important here class is Wag na kayong lumayo in identifying arts, identifying uh, cultural heritages. It you could not. Um, it does not necessary. I should say it's not necessary that you go away from what you practice in your own locality. Kagaya natin, we must as well consider first our cultural heritage, then go out of our. Uh, place or territorial jurisdiction just to identify cultural heritages. Alam mo namang uunahin nating pag-aralan yung uh, sinulog ng Cebu or ng mga Cebuanos kaysa sa tinatawag nating panagbenga, ba? Or yung tinatawag nating awong chigangsa, which is these are actual practices, actual cultural heritage that we could attest. Okay? 
na, na pwede nating i-prove sa mga tao na totoo ang nangyayari or totoo ang practice namin yan. Okay? So, in identifying these types of arts in this, this type of cultural heritages, you might as well focus more on our local uh, cultures. Okay? Uh, like, for example, the use also of the gongs. Not all Filipino people use gongs. Okay? Part, um, more particularly, it is used by the Mindanao area, in Mindanao area and in Cordillera part of uh, the Philippines. Sa Cordillera, ginagawa natin nito, we use the gongs. We use the gongs to make or assemble music and performed during celebrations or, fit, or festivals or uh, any kind of events or some important events while the Mindanao people also use the gongs okay, and to portray or relay some stories about their cultures, about their origin, and perform street dances also as part of celebrations or occasions in their area. Okay, so that is uh, the essence of the law on or the essence of assembling or making or creating the uh, NCCA. Okay, to protect and encourage, to protect or preserve our na national cultural heritage and to promote and encourage Filipino artists to come out in the open and show their talents to the public. Okay, because Filipinos are innate talented people class. So we don't need actually some expert people coming from other countries just to teach us how to make an art because Filipinos are innate artists. Okay? Magaling ang mga Pinoy in terms of art. Okay? The only difference is that kulang ng support usually okay, or encouragement okay, para sa mga taong may talento ng ganito. Okay, ng pag ng magcreate pag recreate ng isang uh, art okay well just folding the fork and making it is a bangle nakita niyo yon yung yung nang tawag doon bracelet na fork lang tinupi lang yung fork and then nilagay naging fashion siya so it already becomes a jewelry okay? that is actually an art okay? at ano sino naka-invento ng ganun is a Filipino. So, Filipinos are very good in, uh, particularly in terms of art. Okay, now, a side class from RA7356, which creates the NCCA, encouraging every Filipino people to create art, we also have what we call the Intellectual Property Code or Republic Act 8293 that covers okay, or protects the works of art. Okay. Specifically, in Section 172.1, okay, the, the law protects literary and artistic works that are original, okay, intellectual creations are being protected at the moment of their creation. So, be very specific, class. Be very careful in that particular um definition given by Republic Act 8293 sabi niya doon those literary and artistic works that are original intellectual creation so this meaning if it's original intellectual creation ito yung sarili mong ginawa out of your own idea out of your own skill it is something that you created from your own feelings from your own experiences based from the concept that you have made or formulated because there are other works that is being put into action by somebody else but the idea comes from other people in the original intellectual creation okay Limbawa, idea ko yung paggawa ng isang uh, non-stick pan or frying pan idea ko yun, but since I do not know how to, or I do not have the raw materials to make it, 
na, na kwento ko sa kaibigan ko. Yung kaibigan ko ngayon, dahil may raw material siya, nakuha niya yung idea ko, siya yung gumawa. Okay. Actually, in intellectual property code, okay, hindi yun kasali. Bakit? Kasi hindi literary and artistic work. Okay. Pag literary kasi, you are talking about musical compositions, letters, books, pamphlets, journals, and AD, other written materials. Okay, that's our, those are literary works that expresses the, the idea and the feelings of what we call the artist. But if you talk of artistic works, well, that is a broad term which may include my example a while ago. Okay, yung frying pan. I have the original intellectual idea of making a non-stick frying pan. But because I did not have the raw materials to use, ang ginawa ngayon ng kaibigan ko, kinuha niya yung idea ko at siya ang nag-produce ng non-stick frying pan. Now, the question is, is her work being protected in intellectual property code? Depende. If I had okay, patented or registered my idea, then his work, eh, yung work ng kaibigan ko, is not protected under intellectual property code. What is protected is my idea. Kasi yun ang niregistro ko. Yun ang niregistro ko ang intellectual property code that ipinapatent ko ang tinatawag doon. If you say iparehistro, ipatent. Eh, you have to make it patented. Okay? Patented meaning to say na, okay, iregistro namin ito, ito idea, idea ni letter A. So, kapag idea ito ni letter A at may nagpapatent ng parehas na idea, makikita nila, oh, hindi original yung sa'yo, hindi pwede, di mo pwedeng iproduce yan because the idea, original idea is not yours. Okay? So, it is only the artistic work and literary work which are original intellectual creations that are being protected by Republic Act 8293. Okay? Aside from that, it is also in that provision of law that derivative works is being protected by what we call copyright. Again, I wanted to emphasize yung uh, intellectual property code is specifically and primarily protects rights on literary works. Yun ang preference niya, yun ang priority na prinoprotektahan ng intellectual property code. Okay? Literary works, derivative works, artistic works that are original and intellectual creations. Okay? So, ano naman yung derivative works? Derivative works is, I have the idea, or I got the idea from another person, but I repolish it okay? and make something out of it na may semblance man, hindi exact copy of the idea. Is it allowed? Yes, is it? It is. And it's called derivative work. From the term derive, so I derived my work from the idea of somebody else. Yung example ko kanina, baka naguluhan kayo, sabi mo, sabihin nyo, Ma'am, sabi mo kanina, yun lang original intellectual property, uh, intellectual creations ang pinaprotektahan ng intellectual property code. Now you are telling us na pwede naman pala. Okay. Again, I wanted to emphasize this. Tama yung first. We only protect under intellectual property code yung original intellectual creation. Katulad ng example ko, yung idea ko na ipinapatent ko, yun lang ang protektado ng IPC at hindi yung prinudus ng kaibigan ko na hindi na patent. Okay? Hindi na patent. So, kung sino yung unang nagpapatent ng kanyang idea, yun ang mara recognize and being protected by intellectual property code. Okay. Now, ang ginawa ngayon, paano kung ang ginawa ng kaibigan ko is, nakuha niya yung idea non-stick pan. Yung idea ko is square na non-stick pan using a black coat or I will coat the steel that I will be using in a black color. Ang ginawa niya ngayon, he got the idea, he did not make a frying a non-stick frying pan, but instead, make a non-stick pot. So, hindi, hindi palayok ang ginawa niya kasi yun yung idea ko. 
Ang kinuha lang niya yung idea ko na non-stick pan, ang ginawa niya, gumawa siya ng kaldero ngayon na non-stick. Okay. And then, pinapatent niya. So, may patent ako doon sa idea ko of non-stick frying pan. Ipapapatent niya ngayon yung, yung uh, non-stick pot niya. Do you think the IPC will receive the the work of my uh, friend or not? The answer is yes. Why? His work is derived from my idea. It's a derivative work. Is it an exact copy of my idea? No. Why? He made some adjustments. Parang ganito lang yan class if we are going to compare. Mayroon akong sinabi, kinote mo. Kinuha mo exacto yung wordings ng sinabi ko. Okay? That is an exact copy. Okay. So, hindi yun pwedeng ipapatent. But what if yung sinabi ko ngayon, pinalitan mo yung pagkakasabi? Rephrase mo. Ire-rephrase mo. Let's say, ang sinabi ko is, uh, I am ugly. Okay. Yun ang sinabi ko. I am ugly. If you are going to write it, ang ginawa mo ngayon, hindi mo ginamit yung term na ugly. Eh, hindi mo rin ginamit yung term or yung pronoun na I. Instead, ang ginawa mo is, she is lovely. Okay. Obviously, nakuha mo yon from my speech. Okay. But you rephrase it. Will that be protected by under IPC? Okay. Yes, in terms of derivative work. Iyon yung example class. Now, hindi ko sinasabi na pwede yung frying pan or something else kasi uh, derivative of uh, IPC, as I emphasized a while ago, talks about literary works and artistic works. Okay? Ginawa ko lang yung example just to distinguish a derivative and an original intellectual creation. Okay, so, dalawa kasi ang klase na protektahan ng intellectual property code. Okay, derivative works and the original intellectual creations. Under intellect, original intellectual creation, that which is first being patented, the original idea is being protected. Okay? And in the next one, in derivative work, the works that being derived from an original copy, of the work is being protected by a copyright. Okay? Pinapa-copyright yan. So, ano ngayon yung mga uh, literary and artistic works which are included that being that are being protected in IPC? Okay? Ang daming examples niyan. Books, pamphlets, letters, dramatic uh, compositions, original ornamental designs or models drawings or plastic works of scientific or technical character, and computer programs, and other literary, scholarly, scientific, and artistic works. Ito, computer programs. Uh, usually, kapag may ni-install kayo na app sa, sa mobile phones ninyo, may nag-a-appear doon na we use cookies or this application use cookies. Do you accept the terms or not? May mga ganun yan. Bakit? That is to ensure kasi class that na uh, yung application na yon, okay, it emphasize or it manifest, I should say, na yung, yung application na yon is an original uh, intellectual creation of somebody else. Okay? Na, na nakapatent talaga yon. Now, so, sa examples naman ng derivative works, meron yung dramati dramatization, yung halimbawa yung, uh, like for example, yung uh, tinatawag natin novel of Romeo and Juliet. The, the novel itself okay, is a literary artistic creation which are original intellectual creation. Nung ginawa siyang movie, it be, the movie itself is a derivative work. Bakit? The movie was based on the story. Okay? Binigyang buhay ng movie yung naka-print uh, sa libro or sa, naka-print sa novel. Okay? 
So it is derived from an original copy. So that's why it's called derivative work. Is it protected? The movie is protected under intellectual property code? Yes. Okay. As a derivative work, copyright. Okay. I hope you get the uh, essence of that. Now, one, um, what's this? One topic that we are going also to discuss is that, or to emphasize in this topic, is the specific periods in which these particular works are being protected. Artistic works are being protected for particular years. Bakit may expiration yung protection na binibigay ng Intellectual Property Code sa mga literary artistic works that are original intellectual creations and derivative works. Bakit hindi forever, ma'am? Bakit kailangan uh, merong expiration? Alimbawa, sa applied art, kailangan 25 years after creation lang. So, kung create ko ngayon yung applied art, magbilang ako ng 25 years. After 25 years, okay, magiging public domain na siya or pagmamayari na siya ng publiko. Meaning to say, the public can already readily use okay, your creation without violating any law. Wala na silang binaviolate na law. Bakit? Naging pag pagmamayari na siya ng publiko after 25 years. That is for applied art. For audio and visual works, 50 years from the publication. Alimbawa, Pelikula. Yung pelikula ni Jet Li. O, oh, sige, si Jet Li. Si Jet Li pa talaga. Okay. Pelikula ni Jet Li. Ngayon, pre-noduce. Okay. Ito yung first launching niya, 2021. So, magbilang ka from 2021 na na-release hanggang after 50 years. Okay. At the end of the 50th or the 51st year from the time that it was being published, Magiging, it will be reverted as a public property. Magiging public property na siya. Meaning to say that we could already watch it free. Okay? We could readily have a copy of it. We can reproduce it. We can explore and exploit the movie. Why? Because it already becomes a public property. Okay? So it already becomes a public property. Okay, and lastly, we have performing arts. Performing arts last also 50 years from the end of the year which it took place. Uh, like for example, yung stage play na Les Miserables. Ano bang spelling nun? Les Miserables. Okay, but the pronunciation, because it's a British, uh, English, you, or a Spanish term, then you pronounce it as Les Miserables. Okay, we're in si Miss Saigon uh, Leia Salonga is one of the performance eh, performers. Okay, Nag, it's a stage play. It's an opera that is uh, is being played in an opera house. Okay, so pinag perform nila internationally yon. Okay, so where people are going to interpret the song okay, through their actions through dramas. Where in they, they spoke the language by singing. So, kinakanta nila yung wordings ng drama. At, at saka, yung binibigyang buhay nila through actions, yung uh, kanta. Okay? So, that performing art class is being protected by IPC for 50 years from the last year or the end of the year that it took place. So, halimbawa, ngayon ipina, ipina, she know yung uh, lay mesera. So, you count from today, uh, 50 years, and that will go already back as a public property ready for use. Okay? So, ibig sabihin non class, Yung sabi ko kanina, we could already explore and exploit. We could use freely okay, those performing arts. Okay. Kasi nag-expire na yung protection of the intellectual property code. And if you say it expired, meaning to say that the private property or the, private, the privacy okay, 
of that particular art has already been uh, dismantled. Nawala na yung protection, nawala na rin yung pagiging private character ng particular work of art. Okay? So, pwede nang gamitin ng mga tao. Okay? So, bakit? Why do they need to put a specific period or expiration for such particular uh, performing arts or kinds of arts? Bakit kailangan may expiration yung protection na binibigay ng ating batas under intellectual property code? Bakit hindi nilang uh, tinatawag nito hindi nilang forever or lifetime? Well, you could transfer the right for the, uh, to your heirs okay? but in the same way na mag apply pa rin yung specific period of their protection. Bakit? Because to give also, okay, to give also the uh, right or freedom for the public to use and enjoy the benefits of your creation. Kasi imagine mo, class, halimbawa 25 years old ka ngayon, okay, nag-produce ka ng isang art, it is protected for 50 years. After 50 years, how old are you? That would be 75 years. So, ayaw mo pa rin ipagamit sa publiko yung, yung art mo. Okay? So, yun ang sabi ng batas. So, since uh, ang gagawin naman natin, after 50 years, na-enjoy mo na yung pagiging uh, pagmamayari mo, okay? so it's time for the public, it's time for you to release it to the public and let them use your uh, creation. Yan ang sinasabi ng batas. Para maging patas naman kayo, anyway, pagdating mo ng edad na to or pag, pagdating ng expiration date ng protection ng art na ginawa mo, matanda ka na o kaya nga, pwede pa nga wala ka na sa mundo. Okay? So, it's time for you to let also the people enjoy the benefits of your creation. Kasi imagine in mo, class, the first thing that you are going to do or the basis for you, okay, to make an art or to produce an art is because of the fact that you wanted to express your feelings, you wanted to show your emotions to the people, you wanted to share them your ideas about something else, to convey the message. So how could these people or the people enjoy or decipher the meaning of or the message that you wanted to relate to them if you're not going to let them freely use it. Okay. Alimbawa, nag-create ka ng painting about uh, martial law. Okay? So, martial law is 1972. Around 1972. Okay? Tama ba ako? Uh, I, might get wrong, I might be wrong with it. Pero, let's say, let's say na lang na I got it right. So, 1972. Ngayon is 2021. So, still yung painting mo ng 1972, ayaw mo pang pagamit sa tao ngayon. Anong silbi? Okay. How would we know now kung ano yung idea na gusto mong sabihin nun? Kung ano yung uh, emotions mo during the time that you were portraying? Diba? Kung hindi mo siya ipapagamit at kung walang expiration yung protection of the law. Okay. So, kailangan... Uh, kaya ang sinasabi ng batos, mag-expire yung protection. After after 50 years, if that is a performing art, okay, mag-expire na yung protection, the people could already readily use your creation. Okay, para naman, ngayon, na generasyon, malalaman namin na, ah, yung painting niya nagsasabi na masama ang loob niya sa gobyerno nung panahon na yun. Okay? So, we already get the message from your painting. The, the feelings that you have or the message that you wanted to convey to the people during that particular time nung kasagsagan ng martial law o sabihin na natin yun pala prinuduce mo nung kasagsagan ng martial law so the people would not be able to know your feelings or the message that you wanted to convey kung hindi pa siya free na gamitin ng mga tao yung uh, kailangan pa magbayad sila or bilhin nila yung painting mo so, well Actually, yun naman talagang isang purpose ng mga artists. One is to express their feelings or they cannot deny the fact that another purpose is to gain from their painting. Hindi ba? 
hypocrite na lang yung magsasabi na uh, gumawa ako ng painting just for my eyes. Ang isa sa mga purpose niyan is to gain um, money or to gain something. If it's not money, I have other benefits from it. Okay? So, yan. Yun class is a protection given by law under IPC. So, the last one is, of course, we could not ignore the protection that is given by our 1987 Constitution or the fundamental law of the land. Okay? Where the IPC and the other laws uh, are uh, 7356 is being based. Okay? So, in Article 14 of the 1987 Constitution, it provides actually for the guidelines in the promotion of arts and culture in the Philippines. Okay? That is why in Section 14, it says that it, the state is fostering the preservation, the enrichment, and dynamic evolution of Filipino national culture. So these are actually pure encouragement to the Filipino people to engage themselves and enhance their skills in the production or creation of arts that would okay, represent our national identity. Okay, so that is the end for the topic on the laws and provisions that is related to art protection. Okay. There are still other laws that uh, is used or being implemented to actually protect or preserve national cultural heritage. Okay, but um, those three are the main laws that we need to know or we need to uh, be familiarized with so that we would appreciate the essence why people uh, are still creating works of art. Okay? So, bakit kailangan natin gumawa ng art? Bakit kailangan pero protektahan ng batas ang paggawa o pag-create ng isang art? Okay? Well, in terms of uh, the Philippines itself or our nation because it is one way of showing our national identity. Okay. That is in terms of our society. But if you are talking about the individual or the artist itself, well, it brings so much benefit for them. Okay, so thank you very much for listening. I hope you understand already the topic as a whole. If you have any questions, you are free to um, message me or post it on our Google Classroom. Okay, thank you and goodbye.